Well, I can't believe it. After ooh, six years, I think now, living on a boat, we're finally, officially, live aboard. I probably should be cheering, but I'll get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> She's not cheering at all. She hates it. She wants to be a... Uh, off don't you Beverly? I do just like you're off script so anyway. <laughs> so uh, soon as uh, we are now on overboard and uh, unfortunately we are in a marina a little bit more than we would like to be we just thought we'd uh, chat to you about marinas both as liverboards and as cruisers. Now you know we would prefer to be cruisers but unfortunately we're liverboards so these are our hints and tips on being a liverboard in a in a marina. I think you're 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 skipping around here, but you're missing out the most important thing. We need to move the boat closer to the lee. Yeah, that is our first very first. Because when the loo is up there and you're here, you don't want to go 100 meters if you can't. So job number one, let's get the boat moved closer to the toilet. Well, that was a big job, wasn't it? <laughs> now, the main reason uh, that we moved the uh, boat, uh, apart from being closer to the toilet, was what we wanted was what's called a open finger. So that when we're coming down the alley, we can actually see it. Yeah, we can just drive into the finger and be up against it, as opposed to the one on that side, where we're sort of... We sort of can't see the finger or the cleats or anything. You have to sort of come up a lot more square and turn in a lot sharper. Yeah, so um, that's an advantage of being here. The other advantage is we're a lot closer to the tap. Oh, the water tap. Yes, yes. Uh, we had minor problems in as much as our... It's a, it's a long... I don't know what length it is, but it's a long hose. But it, to reach the rear water tank, it was about that much short from the tap. We could do it, but it was a bit of a stretch and a bit of a... We had to take it across other people's boats to get it here. Yeah, but uh, now that we're closer to the finger, we are closer to the tap. So when you are a liverboard, where your tap is and where your hose is, is an important factor. Yeah, the electric point's not a thing because there's just one in every bay. True, yeah. but obviously if you're a liverboard, then you do want what's called a serviced uh, berth. Not rather... necessarily. No, no, that's an assumption. Some people do want a service berth. Some people are quite content to live off their um, solar panels. Their solar panels and whatever. The water's always a problem unless you have a water maker. And to be honest, you wouldn't use a water maker in here anyway because it would gunge up in about a week. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, the marina's clean enough, but it's a marina. It's not like being out in the sea. It's totally different out there than it is in any marina anywhere. So I don't think you'd be using a water maker in here. But to come back to my other problem <laughs> and this is as Gaynor hinted earlier being classed as a liverboard um, is a bit of an issue uh, I know we've been on board living aboard for five, five or six years now but I've never thought of myself as a liverboard as in in a floating caravan park <laughs> as a floating caravaner you know um, what the Americans very nonchalantly call trailer trash 
I think that's why Beverly doesn't want to be one. <laughs> no, but one of the things over the years, and we've talked about it on camera occasionally, is that when we're going off and you're sailing off over the horizon and you're leaving everything behind you, you're leaving all the shops you know, all the people you know, all the things you know, and all the places you like to go, and all that sort of stuff. You're leaving it all behind. It's disappearing, a little tiny dot over the horizon. I'll be honest, that causes a bit of apprehension. It causes a lot of apprehension. It can do. It's a, it's a lot to leave everything you know behind and know you're not coming back. That is, it sounds great in theory. Oh, great, I'll be able to explore the world. Try doing it. It's like a lot of things people come up with in their minds. It's a fantastic idea until you have to do it. It's very difficult to um, sever your ties. I mean, say, so let's be honest, the reason we're here this year is because Beverly's mum's not well, and that's a tie we're not with, willing to uh, go snip snip at, is it, Bev? No, it isn't. So, all of a sudden, to be converted from a cruiser to a liveaboard, I'm now actually sort of missing that little bit of stress that I used to have going over the horizon. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's sort of great in theory, but in reverse. <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah, I would be a little apprehensive going off. But I'd probably be less apprehensive going off now because a lot of the areas around here we have cruised and so we're not going anywhere really, really strange. And we know where there's cover and we know where there's anchorages and we know where there's services. So it's lost a little bit of the nerviness. But I think if we were going somewhere totally new... Which is where I like to go. There'd be a bit of apprehension. It's just the nature of it. You don't know what you're getting into. Yeah. But at least we've uh, severed ties quite a few times. So. I, su I suppose not knowing what you get into is part of the adventure. That's why it is an adventure, not a trip. <laughs> no, no, it's a trip if it goes to plan. It's an adventure when it all goes to plan. <laughs> Now, yes, my weather, my weather forecasting guys do an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, it's definitely turned a bit nippier, hasn't it? Well, anyway, um, we want to talk about um, when you go out cruising. So why do you go into marinas when you go out cruising, Bev? Seriously? Yeah. Well, because marinas give you access to land and the purpose of land is to keep boats supplied with goodies. Exactly! It's only there because you need stuff. Yeah, and stuff that's maybe too awkward to get in your dinghy. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, ding dinghies are fine, but do you really want to haul heavy stuff into your dinghy, across a lump of sea, which might be blown like this, and then try and get the dinghy to the back of the boat while you're bouncing around like a cork and then get it all aboard? No, you come into marina, you tie up. Yeah, and it just makes life a lot easier if you're needing stuff. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing is, where do you get information about uh, marinas and different marinas? <laughs> There's a big place full of white boats that you're going past. <laughs> I mean, you just look. <laughs> you just look. Well, you can get some information from reeds. And uh, in reeds, you get a very, very small wee diagram. And you get some information about the marina. Um, it does have facilities, as in, at the bottom, what kind of water, that kind of stuff. What, like salt or fresh? <laughs> I mean, come on, you only get one kind of water. Yeah, but some marinas don't even have water available at them, so... You will get information on petrol or diesel. Yeah, exactly. But so... sometimes it just says fuel, mm. so it's a bit nondescript. You so... So you've got to find out, uh, but it does have contact details. So if you need to find out before you go, it does tell you the contact details. Another source of information is your pilot guide. Sorry, the, the racing boat next is doing very strange things with his bicep. I just don't understand what he's doing, but it keeps distracting me. Carry on. <laughs> Anyway, another place of uh, information is your pilot guide. And um, in the pilot guide, the diagram is a lot bigger. But on top of uh, the bigger diagram, you get a lot smaller diagram, which is a more of a close-up of the actual marina itself, which can be useful. Yeah, can we just talk about the pilot guide for a minute? 
these things aren't cheap. And when I say they're not cheap, this one here was £32.50. And that was a, a couple of years ago, so maybe £35 now. Hmm. Um, a lot of people will say that's a lot of money to pay for a pilot guide. And they're right, because this one here covers a very small area. And if you're doing the Scottish Islands, you need to buy about four or five of these things. So you're looking at a bill of about 120, 150 quid just for pilot guides. But the one thing about these is they're great for dodging marinas. Yes, because you don't want to go into marinas all the time, do you? No, yeah, because the upshot is that the average marina for a boat our size is £35 a night or roughly one pilot guide. Mm. So every night I stay in a marina is a pilot guide. So if you can find anchorages, which the pilot this does actually talk about, um, then... By, by cruising club, you get the plug here. <laughs> so if you can find anchorages, then that means that you don't have to be in a marina, which is exactly what you want to do. Yeah, so if I buy this, I might be able to miss three, four, five, six, seven nights in a marina, something like that. And that's like buying seven pilot guides. So this thing can pay itself back very, very quickly. Hmm. It is, in our opinion, 30 odd quid well spent. And, um, you know, we've had this for a couple of years now, and uh, we'll probably <laughs> use it again. Which is why it looks like it does. <laughs> <laughs> this one here is absolutely hammered, because we sail through that area all the time. We do. And but like last, like, like, uh, not last year, but the year before, we sailed past Carsig Bay for years. And then we looked at this and we, we wanted to try it to, to wait for something and we thought, you know what, we'll give it a go. And we looked at that and there was an anchorage in it. And then there was another lunchtime anchorage at Lag Bay in this and we tried that. And it was brilliant and it really helped us split a journey up and save us a night in a marina. Because otherwise we'd have wound up probably in Grove Haven or Oban or somewhere like that. Mm. But um, like I say, um, this does have information and it does also have information on supplies and what you can get there but if you're up in the northwest of the uk in fact if you're in northern ireland scotland full stop you get this little beauty welcome anchorages now the beauty of this thing well pass it over the beauty of welcome anchorages is that the marinas give it to you for nothing it's free okay walk in the marina up there they've got they've got a snack of these sitting up there and you just walk up and take it we got a few spares down below because we give them to cruisers we meet and this is a guide to the entire cruising area of Northern Ireland and Scotland. And it tells you where all the marinas are, it tells you the approaches to the marina, the phone numbers of the marinas, the shape of the marinas and the little diagrams, and all the facilities available. And this thing is free. It is an absolutely marvellous resource. And we always say to anybody, if you're going to cruise in Scotland, or even somewhere in Northern Ireland, get a copy of Welcome Anchorages. Just every marina you ask for, or stop at, ask for Welcome Anchorages until they give you one. Now, in Welcome Anchorages, all you get is the close-up of the marina itself, but the main thing you get is all these lovely little diagrams all saying... These little symbols, yeah. These little symbols saying, obviously, that there's water, there's electricity. That means that there's uh, fuel by can. But at least you can look at them and think, oh, okay, those are the kind of stuff that I need. Yeah. The other hints and tips, once you've actually found a marina, now if you're allocated a berth, then obviously you've got to go into that berth. But the main things I would uh, recommend is one, always make sure that you're the, the um, bow of the boat is into the wind. Or the sea. Or the sea. Like in Port Ellen, for example, the sea is going to be coming from this direction. So make sure that your boat is pointing that way, otherwise you're going to get slack. Like when we go visiting Carrick, mm. the visitor pontoon in Carrick, um, the way the entrance of the marine is designed, there are certain wind conditions and things like that, that the waves just basically hit the outer sea wall and get directed in and they just slap into the visitor pontoon. And if you have your stern facing the entrance, you really know about it because the noise that the stern makes as the waves hit it is unbelievable. Yeah, so always try and get your, your, the bow of the boat into the waves. Yeah, if you have the bow of the boat facing those incoming waves, it's a lot quieter aboard. You will, you'll, you'll appreciate it a lot more, won't you? 
if you've got a wind that's going to go uh, across your boat, then think about whether you want to be pushed off the finger or pushed onto the finger. Who the hell thinks about that? Nobody wants to be pushed onto the finger. Exactly, because if you're being pushed onto the finger... By the way, I'll just point out that given the prevailing winds around this marina... We're actually going to be pushed onto... We're going to be pushed onto this finger because the prevailing winds from that direction and we've now put the pontoon finger over there. Whereas we used to get pushed off it in the really, really big storms. Yeah, well, that is a disadvantage in this particular marina, but it's just something that you should try and think about when you're going in. Well, this is all well and good. And it's great to be giving these hints and tips to people who are going out cruising, but... We're stuck in a marina. I know. So what are we going to do about that? We're going to try and get out as much as possible and do what we can. So what have we been doing about it? We've been watching other people's channels. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to have to live vicariously through you lot. (laughs) Uh Uh, One thing we have picked up is a navigational tip, isn't it? And we'll be covering that in a future video. Certainly when we've understood what the heck it does. <laughs> yep. So uh, we'll give a shout out to the appropriate channel and the appropriate person at the appropriate time when we do that one. Yeah. Otherwise it will all get a bit disconnected otherwise. <sighs> what was today's big event? Oh! We got gas certified! Hey. hey! Yes, it's true. We're totally certified. <laughs> <laughs> We're certifiable. <laughs> well, it was just one of those things. Because we are a liveaboard now, we had to actually get a gas certification, and oh. we've got it today. Our welcome anchorage is paying us for the advertising. No, unfortunately not, but yeah, put that, even so. Put that down, put that down. So, I think that'll have to wrap it up for an eye. And uh, we'll hope to see you in our next episode. Which will hopefully be a bit warmer. Hopefully. I mean, it's a great improvement. Yeah, the summer has at least started, but it's still changeable. It is, and we could do with a, just a bit more changeable, couldn't we? Just a bit more sort of... Sun- a bit more fair. A bit more sunny. Yeah. 